Hello, this is R.J. Deacon reading the slip opinion syllabus from the Supreme Court of the United States decision in Iastis v. Davis Director, Texas Department of Criminal Justice Correctional Institution Division. Certiori to the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. Argued October 30th, 2017. Decided March 21st, 2018. Petitioner Iestis was convicted of murder and sentenced to death in a Texas state court. He secured new counsel, but his conviction and sentence were affirmed on appeal. A third legal team sought unsuccessfully state habeas relief, claiming trial-level ineffective assistance of counsel, but not counsel's failure to investigate petitioner's mental health and alcohol and drug abuse during the trial's penalty phase. His fourth set of attorneys did raise that failure in a federal habeas petition, but because the claim had never been raised in state court, the district court held it was barred by procedural default. That decision was vacated and remanded for reconsideration in light of Martinez v. Ryan, where this court held that an Arizona prisoner seeking federal habeas relief could overcome the procedural default of a trial-level ineffective assistance of counsel claim by showing that the claim is substantial and that state habeas counsel was also ineffective in failing to raise the claim in a state habeas proceeding. Trevino v. Thaler extended that holding to Texas prisoners. Petitioner filed an ex parte motion asking the district court for funding to develop his claim that both his trial and state habeas counsel were ineffective, relying on 18 U.S.C. 3599-F, which provides in relevant part that a district court may authorize funding for investigative, expert, or other services reasonably necessary for the representation of the defendant. The court found his claim precluded by procedural default, and thus denied his funding request. The Fifth Circuit also rejected the funding claim, under its precedent that 3599F funding applicant must show he has a substantial need for investigative or other services, and that funding may be denied when an applicant fails to present a viable constitutional claim that is not procedurally barred. The Supreme Court held the district court's denial of petitioner's funding request was a judicial decision and subject to appellate review under the standard jurisdictional provisions. Title 28 U.S.C. 1291, 2253, and 1254 confer jurisdiction to refuse decisions made by a district court in a judicial capacity. Administrative decisions, e.g., about facilities, personnel, equipment, supplies, and rules of procedure are not subject to this court's review. See Hone v. United States. But the district court ruling here does not remotely resemble such decisions. Petitioner's request was made by motion in his federal habeas proceeding, which is indisputably a judicial proceeding, and resolution of the funding question requires the application of a legal standard, that is, whether the funding is reasonably necessary for effective representation. That demands an evaluation of petitioner's prospects of obtaining habeas relief. Respondent's arguments in support of her claim that 3599's funding requests are non-adversarial and administrative are unpersuasive. First, that the request can be decided ex parte does not make the proceeding non-adversarial. The habeas proceeding here was clearly adversarial, and petitioner and respondent plainly have adverse interests on the funding question, and have therefore squared off as adversaries. The mere fact that a 3599 funding request may sometimes be made ex parte is thus hardly dispositive. Second, nothing in 3599 even hints that the funding decisions may be revised by the Director of Administrative Office of the Courts. The lower court cases that appear to have accepted the Administrative Office review of certain Criminal Justice Act payments 
even if a proper interpretation of the CJA are in a posit. Finally, the fact that 3599G2 requires funding in excess of the generally applicable statutory cap to be approved by the circuit's chief judge or another designated circuit judge instead of by a panel of three does not make the proceeding administrative. If Congress wishes to make certain rulings reviewable by a single circuit judge, the Constitution does not stand in the way. The Fifth Circuit did not apply the correct legal standard in affirming the denial of the petitioner's funding request. Section 3599 authorizes funding for reasonably necessary services of experts, investigators, and the like. But the Fifth Circuit's requirement that applicants show a substantial need for the services is arguably more demanding. Section 3599 appears to use the term necessary to mean something less than essential because it makes little sense to refer to something as being reasonably essential. The court concludes that the statutory phrase calls for a district court to determine in its discretion whether a reasonable attorney would regard the services as sufficiently important, guided by considerations detailed in the opinion. The term substantial in the Fifth Circuit's test, however, suggests a heavier burden, and that court exacerbated the difference by also requiring a funding applicant to present a viable constitutional claim that is not procedurally barred. That rule that is too restrictive after Trevino, because in cases where funding stands at a credible chance of enabling a habeas petitioner to overcome the procedural default, it may be error for the district court to refuse funding. That being said, District courts were given broad discretion in assessing funding requests when Congress changed the phrase shall authorize in 3599's predecessor statute to may authorize in 3599F. A funding applicant must not be expected to prove that he will be able to win relief if given the services, but the reasonably necessary test does require an assessment of the likely utility of the services requested. Respondents' alternative ground for affirmance that funding is never reasonably necessary where a habeas petitioner seeks to present a procedurally defaulted ineffective assistance of trial counsel claim that depends on the facts outside of the state court record remains open for the Fifth Circuit to consider on remand. Vacated and remanded. Justice Alito delivered the opinion for a unanimous court. Justice Sotomayor filed a concurring opinion in which Justice Ginsburg